Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Broku, and welcome back to another Dragon Ball video. And today, I'm going to be ranking all of these Super Saiyan transformations from worst to best. Now, I know probably not a lot of you guys are going to agree with me, but I just want to let you guys know, this is not in terms of how powerful they are. These are in terms of my favorite Super Saiyan forms. Nothing to do with power, just the backstory of how they were achieved, how they look, and all that stuff. It's not power based. That would be a lot more obvious of a list. So before we get into the video guys, please do leave a like and subscribe and also comment down below. Let me know your rank from worst to best. Also, join me Discord down below. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm telling you to do that. So go to the link down below and join me Discord. And let's talk about Dragon Ball Z in my Discord or whatever you want to talk about. So anyways, guys, I want to let you know that I'm going to be leaving out some of the trans transformations. Ones that aren't really transformations on their own. They're sort of the extended extensions of others. So I'm going to leave out the Ascended Super Saiyan form and the Ultra Super Saiyan form. As well as the both the Mastered Super Saiyan form and the Mastered Super Saiyan Blue form. As they're not really new forms, they're just really extensions of of themselves so there's gonna be nine super saiyan forms i'm gonna be ranking and let's get into the worst one number nine super saiyan berserk now this is the form that kale uses in the tournament of power it's basically the legendary super saiyan form or the form that broly uses and it makes her extremely strong and it's a lot bigger than a 50 times multiplier it's really strong but i don't really like this form i never really like this form even on broly it, I mean, it makes them really big and it completely contradicts the whole of the ultra super saiyan form where the bigger and bulkier you get the more stamina you drain and the slower you are yet it doesn't work like that and it doesn't make sense um yeah i just don't like it i don't it just doesn't fit well for me and that's why it's at number nine it's not terrible but it could be way better now number eight is going to be continued essentially from the last one and that is the Super Saiyan, Mastered Berserk, or Perfected Berserk, whatever you want to call it. And that is when Kale takes her Berserk form and essentially masters it. It's kind of like an in-between the regular Super Saiyan and the Mastered Berserk form. Now, of course, you'd say, oh, wasn't well, that just an extension of the Berserk form? Well, we don't really know much about it. We'd have to know more about it, so I'm going to continue it. And it does kind of seem like it's its own thing because it's not a in-between of Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan Berserk because it's actually stronger than Super Saiyan Berserk so it couldn't be an in-between it's kind of its own thing but I like it better than Berserk because it lets Kale essentially master her own power it calms her down a bit she can control herself and I like it it's it's more bulky but it's not nearly as bulky as the Berserk form and I like that I like that you can that she can control it it's a form I would like to see return in Super and maybe on other characters as well but it's probably just gonna be a thing that is gonna be reserved for Kale or maybe even Kefla if a fusion of them do return in the future so at number seven and this is probably gonna surprise a lot of people but that is Super Saiyan 2 now I of course love this form I really do like it it's never really been my favorite I really do like it on on Gohan though because on Gohan we can at least tell way better that Gohan is using it well at least when he's a teenager but when he is in the Dragon Ball Z saga and beyond it's a lot harder to tell if he's using it but when Goku uses it I guess we can sort of tell because his hair is different and the lightning and stuff but it's still harder to tell and if some animators when they when he's fighting his hair moves back because of the wind blowing it back and that makes it look like Super Saiyan 2 but we can't tell we don't know and then Vegeta he's really hard to tell Super Saiyan 2 and that's what I don't really like about it is you can't really tell the difference in it now of course you can if you look closely but I wish it was something a lot more different and I didn't like that it was only a two times power boost it kinda seems not really that big of a deal I mean two times power is a lot but for a transformation kind of low but I do like how it is tied to mastering the first Super Saiyan form and then ascending the first Super Saiyan form and you have to work to get to it and Gohan not only did he master Super Saiyan but then he had to get through his own rage and break through his own limits to get Super Saiyan 2 and that's why I like it a lot I do like the form even though it's at number seven but anyways guys let's get into number six so this is probably a bit of a surprise as well but number six is super saiyan rage now yes this form we don't know a lot about it at all we 
don't really know anything, and it doesn't make a lot of sense, and that's kind of what I like about it. I kind of like the mystery, and I like the fan theories and speculation about it. We don't know a lot about it. In fact, all we know is that it's a Super Saiyan form tied to Rage, and that it is very strong. We've only seen this on Future Trunks, and even though it was not very explained at all, I loved it. And I liked how it was essentially a mix of regular Super Saiyan, Ultra Super Saiyan, or Legendary or Berserk, it's kind of like that, and tying that with Rage, and what might even be God Key. The whole blue part of that just looked like the blue stuff from the Super Saiyan God Ritual, and kind of like Super Saiyan Blue. And I mean, Trunks was fighting Goku Black for a year, so maybe he got some sort of God Key from that. He also, you know, did some stuff with the Supreme Kai, maybe he got a little bit from that. And maybe from seeing Vegeta go Super Saiyan Blue, and seeing Goku go Super Saiyan Blue, and seeing uh, Goku Black go Super Saiyan Rose, maybe that would give him that form. But I love the way it looks, I like how strong it makes the user, and I like that it's tied to Rage. So at number 5, it's going to be the good old Super Saiyan form. Now, I love the original Super Saiyan, I love the first transformation, it's so amazing. Now, the first time I personally saw Super Saiyan was in the first Kula movie, and I thought that was badass. I loved it when Goku was fighting Kula, then Kula transformed, and I was like, oh no, what's Goku gonna do? And then Goku had that little bird in his hand, he went Super Saiyan, and was like able to bring the bird back to life. But I thought, like, I was like, wow, Goku changed his hair color, he's gotten bigger, he's a lot stronger now. I love it. And I remember that as being my first viewing of the Super Saiyan form. In fact, that was the first thing of Dragon Ball I've ever, I'd ever watched. And I loved it, and I've always loved it. Even though it's at number 5, it's not really even close to being number 1. It is amazing, and I love the form. I love that the multiplier is huge. I love the legend behind it, how Vegeta wanted it so bad, and Goku gets it. And... Now, yes, it had been watered down a bit because everybody started to get it, but it's just a nice benchmark of power, and it's like, if you can show you can get Super Saiyan, you are essentially showing you're a worthy warrior, and I just love it. So at the number four spot, it's going to be Super Saiyan Blue, otherwise known as Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan. So, I love this form. But the, I'm going to say the biggest drawback right now is that essentially it is Super Saiyan with a blue color palette. But even then, I love the whole story behind it. Now, the look of it is eh. I actually prefer the look of Super Saiyan more than Super Saiyan Blue. But when you add in the whole story behind it of, oh, it's combining Super Saiyan God with Super Saiyan. I love how powerful it is. And honestly... I do love the way it looks, even though I think Super Saiyan is better, but it's just badass, and I love the blue aura they get around them when they go Super Saiyan Blue. And I like that not a lot of people have done it. If you think about it, only Goku and Vegeta have gotten Super Saiyan Blue so far. And actually, they might only be the two Saiyans to ever get Super Saiyan Blue as of this point. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if people do get in the future, especially with Goku having Ultra Instinct and that probably being his main form. And then whatever Vegeta has now, and what we saw in the preview of episode 123, we don't know what that is, but it's still blue. But I wouldn't be surprised if they did the rituals and Goten and Trunks got blue, or further down the line, whoever gets it. But I love blue, but the main drawback is that it's not really groundbreaking and it's what it looks like. If it looked way differently, I'd probably put it up higher, but since it's essentially a copy of Super Saiyan, I had to put it down lower. Now at number three, it's going to be Super Saiyan God. Now, at first, I didn't like this form, and I actually put it pretty lower on the list, if you would have asked me six months ago, and I thought Super Saiyan Blue was way better. But after going back and re-watching the Blu-rays of the Battle of the God Saga, after seeing the God form return multiple times in the Tournament of Power, and I was like, Wow, I mean, this form is actually underrated. I love the look of it. I love the red. I love the red eyes. And I just, I like the name, Super Saiyan God. That's a badass name. And unfortunately, I think it probably should have been in, saved for the final form and not Super Saiyan Blue. I mean, I mean, Super Saiyan God. I mean, what is beyond a God? I, I mean, 
I love it. I love the name. I love the whole backstory to it that you have to have six pure hearted Saiyans get together, do all of them do a ritual, putting five of their pure hearts into a sixth pure hearted Saiyan. And then, like, I just, I love that. And I, of course, I love the look of it. I love the power increase. You get so strong from this and potentially billions of times stronger. And then you lose it and then you regain uh, some of the power and the god key inside of you and you're just way stronger after it. I love that. And that's why it's number three. So at number two, it's going to be Super Saiyan 3. Man, I love this form. I first saw it because I went to Costco one time and I ended up using some of my money. It was a few bucks. I got a VHS tape of like, it was like three episodes of Dragon Ball Z and it was the Goku and Vegeta versus Kid Buu fight. And oh my gosh. When I first saw Super Saiyan 3, I was like, holy crap, this is badass. I love the look of it. I thought it was so cool and so strong. I love the long hair and I love that it, I mean, it's kind of weird that Goku has no eyebrows, but I like it. I do really like that a lot. And I like that there's some sort of a drawback to it. I kind of like it that it does drain stamina. It makes you way stronger, way faster, but it does drain stamina. But we don't know if that can be mastered yet, so it doesn't drain much stamina. So we can't really know the full potential of Super Saiyan 3. But I love seeing it. I'm so glad we got to see it in Dragon Ball Super a few times. But I just love the long hair. I love when Gotenks go Super Saiyan 3. I wish Vegeta would go Super Saiyan 3. That'd be cool. But I love, I just love Super Saiyan 3. I love the long hair. It looks badass and it makes them look strong. I don't know what, ab what about it, but it just does. And I love that it took Goku seven years of essentially 24 hour a day training to get the form and he still couldn't even master it. I mean, that just shows how much of a big deal this form really is. Now, at number one, I know this is going to make a lot of people mad, a lot of people rage, but it's going to have to be Super Saiyan 4. Now, hear me out, guys. I know GT has its issues, but the saving grace of GT for me is the Super Saiyan 4 transformation. Everything about it, I just absolutely love. The whole backstory, I think it's not only the best backstory of a Super Saiyan form, how to get it, but I also love the look of it the best, and it makes sense to me, it's the most Saiyan-like thing. It's more beast-like, Saiyans can turn into giant monkeys. That's pretty beast-like, and I like it because it gives them the fur, and you have to have your tail to have it, you have to go Golden Azaru to have it, essentially you have to have been a Super Saiyan, then go Azaru again, which is a Golden Azaru, master the beast, tame the beast, and then you become a Super Saiyan 4. I love it. I love the look of it. I love how powerful it is. Goku as a Super Saiyan 3 got dicked down by Baby Vegeta, but Super Saiyan 4 Goku could go against Ozaru Baby Vegeta. That's a huge power multiplier. It's very strong. I know it's not the strongest now, but I love it. And it's just amazing. I mean, I would love it to come back in Dragon Ball Super, even just a variation of it. It would have to be called Super Saiyan 4, but I do love it. It's going to be my favorite Super Saiyan form probably forever. I mean, I, there's probably not going to be any new Super Saiyan forms after this, because now they're going with Ultra Instinct, which is its, its own thing. It's not a Super Saiyan form. It's something that anybody can do as long as they train for it. And because of that, I don't think anything's going to pass it. But what do you guys think? Let me know your list down below, ranking from worst to best. That would be much appreciated if you let me know. I want to go through your comments and see if... And I would like to see if any of you guys have the similar list to mine or the exact same. It's very unlikely because there's a lot of different variations as the list could go, but there might be one person out there that 100% agrees with my list. And thanks to all my Patreon supporters, Diraj Payton, the awesome guy only sports broke you on Patreon, and Zach Rotaku. And thanks to my Super Saiyan 2, Israel Flores, Mystic Ghoul, Darius, Badass Thug, Dutch Gamer Monkey, Sin Overlord, Griffin Jacob, Connor Trigg, Locke, and Gerald Herbert. Thank you guys so much for all the support. It really does mean a lot. Hope you guys all have an amazing day. Peace out.